Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Cyrus's podcast. Today, I have my good friend Zach Zoya. What's up, man? What's up, bro? How's it going, dude? Thanks for having me, bro. Dude, Long I time appreciate to see. you. Yeah, I know, right? right? Well, now you're here. Now you're in California, so we got to oh, make it boy. happen. Yeah, man. Yeah. Loving the butterflies. I just noticed. Oh, everywhere. Everything Always, ever. Bro. Is it like all one brand? You had to like... No, they're all different. I just... When I when it's got butterflies or moths, I'm like, usually like, I need it. Yeah. You know <laughs> Is that, that really a thing? Like, that's pretty much it, bro. <laughs> It's got butterflies and mouths. I need I it. I love you know? it, bro. So, yeah, good bro. Look. Man, appreciate you. How's it been? Thank you, bro. Been good. Can't complain right now in Canada. It's minus 30, which I think is the same as minus 30 Fahrenheit. Yeah. You know, like Fahrenheit and Celsius, like, yep. equate at some point. So, happy to be in a, in a place where I can be uh, outside right now. Can't yeah, complain. Yeah, right? Life is good, bro. Yeah, sunny California, right? Yeah, man. We've had a little rain, but it's all good. No, I can take that. Look, I want to... I wanna... Your... Your... An amazing recording artist, Thank amazing you, artist. Um, I I'm like, like we know each other, but I'm also like a huge fan, right? Mm. Like I listen to all your stuff that you put out, and I I think it's just I, I love your art. Um, but I want to talk about like, how did that happen? Hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, how did you go from from uh, where you were to where you're at now? Yeah. Right? Like like you're you're born and raised in Montreal. Yeah. Outskirts of Montreal, technically. Okay. Like if I was. In Montreal right now, I'd say the specific town I'm from, just nobody's going to... I'm from Rwanda, it's called. It's, like, on the on a border between Ontario and Quebec. Yeah. So, like, mid, uh, mid like, under six hours away from Chicago. That way, oh, wow, six okay. hours away from New York type shit. Yeah, yeah. Somewhere in there. So, where did you... When did you start writing music or creating music? So... How did that even come Yeah, up? the way it kind of goes is, like... I've always listened to music. L- music has always been like the, um, the boredom quencher. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. The, the go-to when I was bored. I'd have a TV growing up. So like my downtime was spent in front of the fucking radio, like the, the setup and just like listening to CDs on oh, repeat. Wow. So that's where, I, that's how I know. That's, I know that's where I picked up the skill or like the, the love for music or like breaking down the structure of music. yeah, yeah. yeah. Music came, became, like, a real thing somewhere around, like, 17, 18. I'm 25 now. Um, it was really, like, a... So, my background was, like, rap to start with. I okay. used to sing as a kid just yeah, for yeah. fun. But when I came into, like, the music industry, yeah. it was a, as a rapper. And uh, it was really just, like, people around me just being, like, super supportive from the start. There was no, like, resistance from the moment I started... Um, recording or putting out demos like freestyling and parties it's yeah. just like an incremental just like oh i like what you just did there freestyling yeah. at a party okay i drop a little something on facebook people are like oh that's dope oh, okay i guess i'm gonna drop a full track yeah, on yeah. soundcloud people kind of fuck with it so like i've been really blessed i'm from a place where the industry is kind of small very tight-knit so yep. i feel like people were really supportive from the from the start so it's really easy for me to like oh i guess i'm a professional recording artist now yeah, yeah so really from like 17 to 18 i was like my year of like oh, okay i guess we're making music in 18 and 19 i got signed to indie label in quebec montreal quebec and from there from there uh and now you know, started making music when you were younger you said you used to sing was that just like you were singing for fun were you at a choir were you doing like so yeah no professional training my, my whole family is not really involved in any type of wow. nobody plays nobody's like so you know, no one does music trained. in your family. Nobody does. My dad used to sing in a choir, but it was like the activity, the boring activity I would never go to. Yeah, or like yeah, yeah. I would go, bro, oh, <laughs> dad, I don't want to go to choir. I wouldn't sing like he was saying, yeah. but nah, nobody's like, it was really just like I said, like a boredom thing where it was the only thing to do at first certain that in reading. Yeah. And it kind of just happened. I'm not going to lie. Like hip hop was kind of like i'm also i'm from a very predominantly white place i'm from a predominantly francophone people f- speak french yeah. so i guess the contrast was there from the start when i started like rapping nobody could do it the way i could do it from like the bar of entry was yeah. super, super low super low yeah so that was very like encouraging it's just like oh i guess i'm oh i guess yeah. i'm a rapper now like <laughs> oh sh- i guess i'm the shit let me yeah, you know yeah, let me it keep gave doing me it. It gave me, it would have been really a lot harder if I was in a place where there was like a, a degree of competition from the start where yeah. people were already really good. I had the luxury of anything to just kind of go out there and 
yeah. fuck up in real time and people would still be like mind blown. Still, you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? yeah, I feel that. So and that was it, really like easy for me to get So into. when did you record your first song then? How did that like... Huh. Um, somewhere between like 17 and 18. So I guess I started at 17. So at 17, I was in my little hometown in the yeah. outskirts of Montreal. 17, I start recording my first demos like on a laptop, bro. Like on the mic of the laptop. <laughs> like no nothing. I remember not even I think, the AirPod, not even the nothing. headphone. No, mic. we didn't have headphones. It was, <laughs> I didn't have a cell phone at that time. It wasn't my computer. It was my dad's laptop. Uh, I used Audacity. Yeah, you know what that yeah. is? Like yep. it's not really even really meant for that, but whatever. Figured it out. Sound is horrible. But uh, yeah, but at that it time on. it sounded like whoa, oh, like and for what it was. Your, yeah, like you know what? No, it was. It didn't it sound never great was even like to me. I was, I was a little, I was cringing from the beginning because <laughs> you, I was also, you know, that moment where you hear your voice oh, on yeah. a recording for the first time. Yep. I was all that was. Like, I was second, going through that wave at the same time. <laughs> I wasn't good at like mixing my music, yeah. and I was going through the like hearing my voice for the first time outside of my own head so it didn't sound great but the thing once again the thing that really kept me going is the fact that i sounded like i sounded like what a rapper was supposed to sound like to other people yeah so it's really easy for people to be like okay the quality is mid the track is clearly ripped off a of youtube yeah. or whatever but you sound like what a rapper should sound like you should probably keep doing that you know what so, i mean so did you have like a couple friends that you were like 100%. like that were like recording with you or like that were like around you telling you like so at first, it started, it started out as like me nerding out, like geeking out about like hip hop with yeah. a few of my homies, just like reciting Kendrick lyrics and shit yeah. like that. Just like vibe into it. Yeah. And then next thing you know, oh, I guess we know every word. And then, oh, I guess let's try to do it ourselves. There was one homie, shout out to my, to my homie William, who we started like, his dad had a mic. So after I did my first little demo, he was like, yo, bro, uh, let's try to do a thing. Yeah. And uh, from there, we recorded another little song, still sounded trash. Like, it took a, a good year, two years, until I moved to Montreal for it to start sounding good and for me to yeah. hit, like, a real studio and to be around other people that were artists, that like, that were in... Like, I, I'm a hockey kid. I used to play hockey, so I was still oh, an well. athlete. Yeah. I was still, like, on the way out of, like, my... I was basically on the, um, on the line where it's either I go to college... And it's not college is not the same thing in America yeah. than in Canada, but it's basically I go to school in a sports program where like I move out of town to go specific like For sports. Hockey. Yeah, like a uh, how do you call it? Like a sports uh, not membership, a uh, scholarship. Sorry. OK, yeah, yeah. Like a sports scholarship or I stop hockey. Yeah, yeah. So I decided to stop hockey at that point, move to Montreal and start. So, you know, start from scratch. That's this is interesting. So talk to me. So you you had you were you were you were playing hockey you had an opportunity for to play in college essentially mm -hmm. um and you you stopped that for the music that you were creating or was it for because you wanted to move to montreal and do something like, like it's what kind was... of a combination of all these things coalescing and becoming one yeah. so first of all I was a great hockey player, but I was like the worst of the best team. Yeah. So if I was gonna go to, I wasn't gonna make it to the big. I wasn't making yeah. it to the NHL. That was dead already. Plus, you want to keep your teeth. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and like CTE, like shit, like yeah. that. I was getting like you know, I was getting pretty. <laughs> hockey is pretty fucking rough. But I was getting to this point where it's like, okay, I'm gonna be part of the best team at this whatever college I'm going, yeah. and I won't play. Yeah. You know. Okay. So I was like, okay, this is already like I'm not gonna waste my energy doing this. I'm not having yeah. fun anymore. It was really just a like almost like a not a cultural but a social thing. I had been with my hockey homies for like ten years at yeah. that point, so I was like, Ugh, I guess this is on a way out. I started making music, started like smoking weed and like yeah. you know experimenting on that side of things, and at the same time, one of my homies is moving to Montreal. Okay, yeah. some of my homies are leaving; they're quitting hockey too. So it's kind of like okay, people are doing yeah. other things in life. I'm like I said, it's like that year where we move out. Everybody's moving out because it's college, so you need yeah. to attend another college. I'm from a small town, so you need to move you out to move, of your yeah. city. So I was like, okay, I guess I'm moving out. I guess I'm quitting hockey. I guess I have this opportunity to go to the big city. People seem to like this music thing I'm doing. How about I go to the big city and do this music thing and quit That's hockey true. at the same time? You know, like it yeah. all kind of made sense. Did you have a, right any sort of like identity crisis like as you were like going through that? If anything, that was like my uh, finally found something 
that is me. Like I'm a I'm a mixed kid. My mom is white. Yeah. My dad is black. I'm from a super white place. Like very like hillbilly like mining minor city oh, wow. midwesty yeah like think gary indiana but canada <laughs> and like yeah. in a like people yeah. are not you know it's yeah, not yeah, a yeah. ghost town quite yet i won't say quite yet shout out to my city you know? <laughs> i love my city um very white very french there's also this dynamic in quebec where it's like french is another layer of like we don't want you here i'm french born but my yeah. dad is anglophone is english speaking is english native from south africa yeah so it's, I've always been kind of stuck in that weird in between of like two, uh, it's a classic at this point, but like two black for the white kids and two, am I saying this right? Two black for the white kids and two white for the black kids. Yeah, yeah. I was from a very white place and I was too black for everybody, but I wasn't as black as it gets. I'm mixed. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like around other black kids, I wasn't really fitting in like that. So if anything, my identity crisis was everything before wow. music. If anything, yeah. music was like, Oh fuck! You found I look space. like a Chris Brown. I look like a Isaiah Rashad. I look yeah, like yeah. a Usher. Oh, that's who I am. Yeah. I'm one of these kids. And like, another part of this is in Canada, we don't really have African Americans the same way uh, America has, because we have like every black kid is directly descendant of an immigrant, like children of immigrants, like yeah. one generation, maybe two. And there's like a couple little communities that were there since like slavery days or like the you know underground railroad yeah. went to canada but most people are like oh like it's a very common question in canada to be like where are you from because every immigrant is my dad is from so and so my mom is yeah nobody's what do you like, mean i'm just a black canadian is almost never a thing you know what i mean wow, so yeah. um that's a big difference that there is I'm, i forgot what i was saying with that but no it's just interesting like like from your like like your identity crisis seems like it was more like all the way leading up to yeah. your music. Yeah. And then you finally felt at home with your space. 100% with music. Which, yeah, with music, yeah. which is so amazing. Yeah. Because, because a lot of the times, like, like I was an athlete, right? And like mm -hmm. getting out of being an athlete, it was really hard. It was like a really, like it was an identity crisis to go through this whole thing. What's your, what's your background again? Um, I used to play soccer for a living, right? So What's your I, ethnic background? Oh, I'm, half, I'm half Persian, half Mexican. Gotcha, gotcha. I grew up in Orange County, California, mm -hmm. right? So, like, like I, very similar, like, like where, like, you know, where I grew up is predominantly white, mm -hmm. you know? I was the one that was driving to soccer practice and got pulled over and people saying, and the cops saying, where are you headed? Right. And I'm like, to my house. Yeah. Like, down the street. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that was my life. And, um... But going from playing soccer to like, like then all of a sudden not being able to, there was an identity crisis right there because I, I, I thought people loved me for what I did, not for who I was. Right, 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 right. right. And so that was really hard um, where it seems like it was probably, this was like a relief for you to realize. Oh, 100%. Were, it was like a, a check, but I can, I can relate to what you just said so much. Like I did, like one cheat code I had to be accepted in whatever, like, now we're going back to like elementary school yeah. and like all of my life is sports yeah like you can't x me out because i run faster than all y'all you know <laughs> exactly. what i mean so i'm gonna be part of the team yep. type thing so sports has always been like a safety net for me to like be accepted and that's such a great point you put a you put there like it's not who you are it's what you do type thing or yeah. what you bring to the to the table like people could hate me or i could be an outcast but god damn i'm a score for y'all <laughs> like you know i recess i'm gonna I'm a make you know yeah, in yeah, soccer yeah. like in whatever it is i'm gonna contribute so um sport sports is my net and then i found music and also another point is like because we speak french and my black heritage is not from the french colonies you know how like yeah. there's ivory coast there's like french colonies but my dad is not from there so like i don't i speak keb like same thing as same thing as you being from orange county yeah. like i'm a bl i'm black but i'm i speak like almost like hillbilly french like the Keb French is a very specific one. Yeah. So I speak like that. So even with the black crowd, I don't speak like them. The same way. So yeah. English was kind of like, uh, uh, like it made me universal. Uh, I could talk to everybody in the same way and it made sense to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because otherwise I would talk white to, for, for black people would think I talk white. And then, uh, did I say that right again? I'm, I'm yeah, fucking yeah, it up. Yeah, 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 yeah. White people... Black people, black people thought I, I spoke white and then white people just couldn't figure me out yeah. type thing, you know? 
So, wow, yeah. that's interesting. So, so then you, you, now you're you're moving to Montreal. Yeah, you moved to Montreal, and you obviously just had major success right away, and that was it, right? Yeah, it's like <laughs> like in the top, but like funny enough, once again because Quebec and like the game that we have in Montreal is such a like it's I call it a bubble every time. Yeah, it's yeah. like a an, a micro industry that is yeah. self sufficient that doesn't really communicate with the rest of Canada, let alone fucking the United States or like it's really there's this French centric industry there. People are millionaires. People yeah. are packing selling out rooms like 20,000 cap and like there's a big industry there that's very French centric. So even in there it's either you make it in there and never leave that yeah. ecosystem or you make it out and you can never go back in nah, type thing. So I was blessed enough to be kind of like sponsored by like my indie label is one of the most like the number one uh, hip hop label in uh, Canada. Yeah. But more specifically in Quebec. And I think you actually met my yeah, you yeah, met yeah. Steve. Yeah. Big tall white guy. Like that's the that's the CEO. Yeah. That's also my manager. So I was like from the start, I was kind of like co-signed by the biggest dogs in the small industry that we have. How did you meet that? That makes sense. How did that come up? Funny enough, he's from my small ass town. Wow. He just happens to be from that little town. So I knew of him through because he's kind of a big you, deal. Yeah, like in your town, you know, you know, yeah, like the people that come out of your town. Yeah, he's the Don. Like, and he's he's coming out of my town, but he made it to Montreal and like yeah. started this big thing. And uh, so I knew of him. I always he's very focused on French, like most of his artists. When I got signed, all all his artists were French artists. Oh wow! So I was kind of like, okay, this is not his cup of tea. So show love because we're from the same place. Yeah. But uh, it's probably not gonna happen. But I guess like the connection of being from the same place kind of like made it easier for us to start uh, collaborating together. And yeah, I started dropping on SoundCloud and made quite a bit of noise right out the gate. In yeah. like I said, like in our industry, kind of OGs and veterans of that scene kind of co-signed me right away. We're like, yo, that kid is dope, yeah. and started like telling the execs like, yo. Yep. Get with this kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Steve, shout out to Steve, uh, the CEO of Setium Cell Records, who I'm still signed to to this day, kind of like took me under his wing. We started dropping. So it really went from like dropping demos on Facebook, SoundCloud era. Mwah, thank God for the SoundCloud yeah. era. I got like the last bit like the of last like, bit of it. Yeah. yeah, SoundCloud actually being a nice way to like organically discover yep. music. Facebook, SoundCloud, signed to Setium Cell Records, started dropping like on DSPs. And then, like, a year in, I got signed to Universal yep. Canada, uh, who we did, like, a JV with. Yeah. Who uh, just, we just parted ways, like, right before I got to L.A. But, like, we did a full stint uh, for, like, two years, basically the pandemic. So, like, we yeah, started yeah. in 2020, 2020 to, like, 2022, we did a stint with the majors, dropped a bunch of music. And that's where, like, most of my, yeah. you know, most of the come up, like, most of yeah, the... Yeah, it came from, yeah. yeah. So, I want to go back to, like... Like, you know, you, you went, you, you recorded on your, the mic on the laptop. Yeah. Then you went to your buddy's house. You used that mic. Like, what was it like stepping into the studio the first time? Like an actual studio. Let me think. That's a great question. That's a great question. Let me try to think. I remember at first it was definitely like a fun activity you do with the homies. Yeah. It could have been like, it could have been fucking laser quest or something. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. it was a let's all pull our money together to go get studio and time. And get this <laughs> session together and kind of like, whoa, let's yeah, have yeah, fun yeah. with like a professional that's going to make us sound fucking amazing out the yeah. gate. Which is pretty much what we did. I remember like my first apartment in Montreal. <laughs> so I took a year off of school when I first moved to Montreal. Yeah. I kind of like sold my parents on like, yo, guys. I'm taking this gap year. I'm trying my luck at this music thing. If it doesn't work, I'm going back to school. Yeah. Like classic, like, immigrant yeah, parent, yeah. like, discussion where it's like, <laughs> you better not fucking drop out on me. Uh, so I gave myself a year, moved to Montreal with two Montreal homies who made music. Those are the, like, that's when I say I started hanging out with artists that were yeah. actually about that shit. So at that point, I'm, like, 19, 20. We, we get, like, nine to five jobs, fast food, yep. restaurant jobs pull our money together and start going to that studio that just happens to be by our house so i met my good friend jake and we started recording from there and yeah like it's exactly what i said like it, that exciting 
like it wasn't really at that point it wasn't about like making you know i wasn't working on an yeah. album i was we had demos we had youtube type beats just creating yeah let's fuck around kind of like freestyle and on the spot yeah. just like oh piggybacking off the energy yeah, yeah. oh one thing i was also doing is we were freestyling a bunch at the house okay so we would just have beats playing just just like shoot the shit so it was kind of like that but in a more professional setting i remember it being very fun Sound it, that's when it started sounding amazing yeah. at the time. I, now I look back and it's still cringe, but like in a good way. But at the time, that was like, whoa, okay, now this sounds like a song. Like, whoa, whoa. Yeah, like man. you're learning how to piece it together. Yeah, yeah. some like auto tune, like fucking like noise, like, you know, like when it's mm, like EQ'd, like, yeah. um, like, whoa, okay, that's like how an you actual make... mastered track. Yes. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that's when I was like, oh, wow, this is a thing now. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. So, so then, you know, you, 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 you did your thing, you got signed um, to the indie label, yeah. you did the JV with Universal. Yeah. That's how we actually met, right? Exactly. You, yeah. Exactly. And then, um, and then uh, uh, now you're here, now you live in California. Is yes, there. Um, talk to me about what's next. Where, where are you going? Uh, my, what I always say, what I always said, uh like in the steps coming on my way to move into california in the process of moving to california it's kind of like in french it would be je vais aller me crisser dans mal, which would be i'll go and like how can i describe it it's kind of like let me go out there let me hurry up and fuck up type thing like hurry up and fail type of mentality it's kind of like let me like i said i was in quebec it's a small industry it's it's very comfortable, very fast. So yeah. I feel like I plateaued very fast. Not that there was any, nothing left to yeah. be done in Canada. Like, humbly, like, I could have, you know, Canada is a big country. There's a lot of things I could have done, could have done there. But I basically did what I had to do. I could feel that I wasn't connecting with the right audience quite yeah. yet. And I was getting comfortable. I was getting comfortable. We coming out of the pandemic, things were starting to open back up. And I was like, I want more. I've always kind of wanted yeah. more. I have big ambitions regardless of what it is. Like, I could go back to school. I'd have big ambitions. Yeah. I could start a business that would be big. Like, I kind of, yeah. you know, I can't help it. This, this this thought process that destined for greatness. Yeah, yep. type thing. Hopefully. Yep, I feel that. <laughs> Knock on wood. There's no wood. <laughs> um, uh, but it was it was really that. It was like, let me, let me like, challenge myself for real. Yeah. Let me go in the fucking hustle and bustle of where it's actually at. Let me see what's up. Let me rub elbows with the right people. Yeah. Like be in the in the mix. And to be fair, it it started like probably a year before I met you. Like yeah. I was supposed to move. Like the whole deal with me signing with the majors in Canada was the prospect was moving to the States. It was always that part of sense. the strategy. Yeah. Like duh. It was always yeah. part of the strategy. And unfortunately I signed and a month later That's right, became a pandemic, your right? First show in LA. Yes. I was there. Yes. Yes, you were. Oh, snap. Damn. I History. just thought about that. History. What a trip. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. Wow. That's right. So, and then, so now you're finally here. I'm finally here. And like, like, you know, well, you said something earlier, actually, is, is uh, uh, I just realized that that's, that's cool. Um, fail fast and fail often is yeah. really what I say, right? Yeah. Like they stop pro- that same kind of concept, right? It's like, it's like people always talk about you know, Cyrus, how did you get to where you're at so quickly? Like, you're so young, you're doing this, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I just failed 12 times before you started. Yeah. Right? It's kind of like that that thought process of, like, ready, fire, aim. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, you just got to execute. Yeah. If you can execute on things, like, you'll have success. 100%. Quickly. It'll it'll come at some point because, like, you'll learn, you'll reverse engineer your failure. <laughs> like, you'll, you'll get from, you'll get so much from that. And I feel like, thank God that I had that, um mentality from the start of music like yeah. even comparing to some of my other music homies coming from where i'm from nobody makes music yeah. so if i didn't start on my shitty laptop if i didn't have the balls to post this shitty yeah. ass shitty ass bro trust me this shit was not good <laughs> shitty ass piece of a song on the internet just kind of like hey let me get it started let yeah. me get the ball rolling I would never be where I'm at now. I would yeah. never get the the type of energy I'm getting now. And I'm still kind of like, I still feel like I'm not doing it enough. I'm not putting myself out there enough. 
I'm not putting myself out there enough in a position to fail enough. Like there's so many things I'm working on three videos right now. And I'm like, uh, there's a fine line to, to have between like yeah. perfection and just like, bro, you just got to put it out. You just got to put it out and see what's up. And then next thing you know, the part that you didn't even think of is the part that somebody loved. Yep. And like something in the background that you didn't know would connect with some, something you said, something about your face. And, and that's yeah. just like, I'm, I'm talking about like a piece of content. Like if we talk music, if we talk well, about what you do in life, it's, you know, the ways like the, the I watched an interview recently with um, Rick Rubin. Yeah. Right? And he said something like, he was like, you know, I, I don't know the exact words, so don't quote me on this, but it was something like, you know, a true artist creates for themselves. Mm -hmm. And from there it creates, you know, people basically attract, it attracts people. Yeah. And when I, as I talk to different artists, whether it's in like fine art, street art, uh, music, whatever, like I find that like the most successful artists that I've ever met create for themselves. Mm -hmm. Right. And then, and then people are attracted to, to that. Yeah. Right. Where I feel like a lot of people that are trying to get into this industry, that are trying to get into music, that are trying, they do it. They they try to do it. Oh, what is what? What does this person want to hear? Yeah. What does that person want to hear? What do they want to see on the on the posts? All of this yeah. stuff. But like, like my best performing like content that I put out, is the stuff that I like. I'm like, you know what? I like it. I know it's probably not the best quality. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna put it out. Yeah. And then they get the most views, the most likes, the most. And nah, I'm like, right. are you kidding me? Like, yeah. I worked th eight hours on this. On this other I worked thing. Ten minutes on this. Yeah. And this is what we ended up creating. You know yeah. what I mean? So, it's very interesting. Like as you're going through that process, and like as as there's growth, like I think we all realize that like like you've had success because you're pushing that execution mm -hmm. at every level. Mm -hmm. And also to not, like, it's almost like you said, like, it'd be like, um, you need to do it for yourself. That comes down to like, and it's hard yeah. and I fail every time, but you need to not expect success from it, if anything, you know I what I mean? That. And I'm, I'm actively failing at achieving yeah. that in my daily life. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. of course I want success. It's of course so I want hard. recognition. It's so hard to, truly do it like to not expect a, a reward yeah. for the thing you do or to do it without a reward or the journey itself being the reward well our whole lives it's like, like mm. think about that isn't that crazy like our whole lives we're taught like in school we gotta get a's true yeah right like or else we're failures like in sports we gotta win matches or else we're losers yeah like but that's not how life works yeah like it's all the journey like the most, the most like, like, like genuine and, and, and successful that I've ever felt is when I realized that like, it's about the process, mm -hmm. but it's such a hard freaking thing. Cause I deal with it the same way. Like yeah. sometimes I'm like, dude, I just want to X, Y, you know, I just yeah. want to be here. I want, and I have to remind myself, like, what is the bigger goal? Like it's my life and enjoying my life. Yeah. So do what I love on a daily basis. Everything else will work. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. such a freaking hard and thing. LA is like the, oh, it's the worst. The the <laughs> you know like the the sugar of that like the you know like a such a like a pressured yep. piece of just that. It's like success plastered all over everywhere. the walls everywhere. People embodying yep. your definition of success. People being here for the success and it's. Honestly, I think it might be the most like challenging or trickiest thing to navigate about me moving here. It's like deciphering between being around success and being successful. I think yep. that's a trap that a lot of people fall yeah. in moving to LA or just being in LA on a day to day, like being next to success or being successful is so like, or two worlds apart. Yeah. And you can be in the same room with people that are successful and people that are there to be attached to success. Yep. And then you need to navigate for yourself. Where do you want to be? Do you even need to be there? Yep. Do, are you going to have the FOMO? Are you good with the FOMO of not being in that room? Because it feels like the success yep. would be in that room. Like so many, like Grammy week just passed. Yeah. So much of that, oh, yeah. like so many events, so many places where you need to be when the reality is you, maybe you should be locked in at home working on your craft. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's which very is tempting. Which is, a, it's an interesting thing. Like, um, I went through this. I went through this, like, a couple years ago, you know, where I realized, like, 
like, look, like I could be in the room or I could not be in the room, but as long as I'm with my people, I'm good. Yeah. Right? Like, and like, like I know, you know, let's say in the music industry, I know some of the most powerful people in the music industry. Let's say in this space, I, they're all my friends. Mm-hmm. And they call me, hey, we're going to this event, we're going to this, so this person's going to be there. I'm like, yeah, dude, thanks, bro. Like, I'm not yeah. there. Let's go grab lunch or something. Right? Yeah. Like, and it's about understanding who your people are, I think, and then sticking with those people. Because it is very true, like, the five people you're closest with that you spend the most amount of time with, if you average out their net worth, like, most likely that's going to be your net worth. Mm-hmm. The same thing with their mindset. You, you take the five people you're closest with, and if they have an abundance mindset or a scarcity mindset or whatever, like, like you average out that mindset, they all think, oh, oh they're all pessimists. Guess what? You're probably yeah. going to be a pessimist. You yeah. could be the most optimistic person in the world, but yeah. if you surround yourself with pessimism every single day, yeah. you're just going to be a pessimist. Yeah. What is it? What's it? What's it? What's the bar? Is it like, I can tell you who you are by looking at your, like, yeah, the, the, you are, ah, fuck. The people that you're Somebody closest you, with, yeah. like you just look at, you really you want to know who you are. Just look at your friends. Yeah, look at your close friends. Yeah, that's it. Like, and that's so true. But like, it's it's understanding exactly what you said. Like, understanding you also don't need to be, I, I getting over that FOMO. Yeah, like you don't need to be at every freaking event. You yeah. just need to be with the right people. Yeah, and I feel like if you find wherever you're at and especially here in LA especially in these spaces like you you got to find your core people yeah and then just stick with them kick it with them hang out with them and then from there everything else yeah works yeah you know what I mean yeah because we can easily oh here especially you can easily get lost in the sauce oh, you know sure. what I mean like and be kind of friends with everybody yeah I think you know what yeah. I mean? yeah and and but they're really not friends yeah and then you feel empty because you're hanging out with all these people that are oh successful and yada 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 yeah. but like do they really know who you yeah. are? are you, you know what I mean? actually having conversations with these, these Yeah, exactly. People? Yeah. You know, like, I don't have any, like, personally, I don't have any interest about talking about how y- y- your drunk stories from the other night, you yeah. know? Like, that's just not where my mind is. Yeah. Like, you want to talk about, you know, elevating our lives? You want to talk about something, elevating our mindset, our, our bank accounts? Like, let's yeah. have a conversation. Other than that, like, what are we doing here? Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't yeah. need to hear how you know xyz so person and so and had a good time yeah exactly exactly yeah. Yeah. you know so so now so now what's next i know we talked about like like look like you're here now you, you you know like where's the music going what's your game plan so i'm actively dropping music now dropping music kind of indie for the first time almost in my life so i'm figuring out how to drop music by myself in like in a self-sufficient way like i said like from the start i've always had like so much support yeah that i kind of had the luxury the night or like almost the arrogance of just being like i make the music and like take care of it type thing yeah and not only this is not my situation now but also the world has changed like yep. even if you're signed to the biggest label now they're gonna tell you to make tiktoks you know yep. what i mean like it all it like we decentralize and like that's across music but that's across all you oh, know yeah. like and it's changing every everything day. is changing so it's like Right now, my puzzle, I'm dropping music for the first time by myself at the same time as like figuring out what niche do I want to occupy in this like decentralized, weird social media world that we're in? Yeah. What like what values do I want to hold on to? Which ones am I willing to be like, I right, we're doing it for the content. You know what yep. I mean? Like, where do I put my foot down as to yeah. like, OK, I'm D. De- uh, denaturing is that a word in English? I'm not sure, but like I'm, I'm, you know, I'm pushing the boundaries of what I feel like is me. Yeah, yeah. To like adapt myself to like be, you know, clickbaity. Which you're, which yeah. you're okay. You need to be a. Uh, uh, something needs to happen in the first three seconds of a video. Yeah, to, like yeah, yeah, you know yeah, the yeah. little tricks, like the marketing, the capitalistic part of the the business part of music yep. and the art part of music and how do I merge these two in a way that I'm going to be able to pay rent but yep. I also feel like I'm respecting my artistic vision or yeah. like just integrity. Yeah, yeah. I'm that's what I'm navigating right now. I'm not I'm haven't found it, brother. I'm, <laughs> I'm did not crack the code yet. Actively working on that every day. But uh yeah, it's a mix of like like I said I've been um I'm not sure if it was off air but like um I've made a lot of music in the past years. And now this next part is just like I'm planning on not making yep. that much new music and just like focusing on what I got in the bank, making the most out of it or just like positioning it yeah. in a way that makes sense. Yeah, the strategy of yeah, it. Yeah, the strategy of it all. 
um yeah that's like that's that's what that's what i'm up to right now that's what i love my, that you know i love that yeah. i have um i have two more questions for you well mm. yeah one one uh um if you had to give a piece of advice to somebody that feels like they haven't found their true self yet mm -hmm. kind of like you had gone through until you found that music like, what piece of advice would you give Woo. them? I'll start by saying this is tough because I feel like I was blessed. Music kind of happened to me. So I didn't, I didn't have, like, and I have to search and scout, you know? Yeah. Like, I didn't look too hard for my sense of, like, oh, okay, this is a good place to be yeah. to just come to me. So I feel like, oh. Not that I'm the wrong person to talk, but I'm kind of the wrong person to talk. I was privileged in that sense. But if you don't try, right? Then right. It doesn't happen, right? So, uh, say that. Say your question again. So my question is: is like if if somebody is dealing with with their um, this this like they haven't found their true self. Mm -hmm. Like, what piece of advice would you give them? Like, my philosophy is that there's no such thing as your true self. You are what you do. And I happen to be a musician because yeah. I happen to pursue this path. Somewhere along the way, I took this fork on a road yeah. and became a musician. I could have been so many other things. So it's more my thing is do something that you're at peace with. Yeah. And that's then going to become who you are. I love you, that. Then you're an entrepreneur. You're an artist. Like, we're all more than just this one thing. I'm yeah. more than just an artist. Yeah. You're more than, well, you're many things. So I guess you are who you say you are. <laughs> But like so many people, don't define yourself by what you do. Yeah. Because what you do defines you. Ah, I'm kind of losing myself in my thing. But um, I think to, if you're lost, if you're lost in your sense of like who you are, maybe look at what you do every day and maybe try to inject a, a little a, a proactiveness in there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do you, is there nothing you like? Do you hate your job? Do you hate your partner? Do you hate your life? Yeah. Situation? Okay. Maybe try to inject one thing you love in your life. That could be painting. That could be for you, for you, just for you. And like, I, I also, I try to look at it from a, I'm also, I feel like I'm speaking from a place of privilege because not everybody gets to just like go around looking for the thing they love yeah, yeah. in life. Like people sometimes got to work. Sometimes they got to work for them and their parents yep. and their brothers and sisters. So I understand that I speak from a place of privilege. But uh, even in that, like, hey, that, that like you play with the cards you're dealt, it's the same equation still applies. Yeah. You try to inject a little bit of something that you're good and like doing. That's yeah. what I did. I, I found something I was good at and I kind of like doing. Yeah. And that kind of became a, a, a centerpiece of who of my identity. Dope. That's how I feel. Dope. My last question for you is where can people connect with you? Where do people find you? Mm. Zach Zoya on all socials, baby. Z-A-C-H-Z-O-Y-A. -A. Uh, thank God for my name, man. That shit came in clutch. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Zach Zoya right? everywhere. Uh, Instagram. I'm not on Twitter no more because that shit toxic. But um, TikTok, I haven't posted in a minute, but I'm going to get back on my grind. Um, mainly Instagram on everywhere on the internet, Kill DSPs, it. Spotify, Apple Music, Zach Zoya, Z A C H Z O Y A. Find me. Peep the music. I'm sure some of y'all will enjoy it. Appreciate you. Thank you so My much. My guy, for thank being you so here, much. Bro. I appreciate, appreciate you, man. It.